Hi everybody and welcome to Fab Packs. I'm Rosemary and today I have another stay at home and craft with me video. This time featuring paper rolls. Toilet paper rolls, paper towel rolls, even wrapping paper rolls. All kinds of rolls to create some awesome room decor including clocks, wall hangings, and even coffee pot holders. There's a lot to cover so let's go ahead and get started. For these stay home videos, I plan to use items from around the home, recyclables, and also things you can find in nature. From the home, I'm just using this salad bowl that I have, as well as a couple of toilet paper rolls that I'm marking off at one inch intervals. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just cut there to make one inch rings. For this project, I'll be using five of the rings and arranging them three down and three across, because that's the size of the bowl that I happen to have. Your bowl might be larger. And um, then I'm going to just glue them all together with some hot glue. And then I'm going to proceed to take my branches, my tree branches that I just found in the park, and cut those down to three quarter inch. I want them to be a little bit smaller than the ring size because I don't want them to protrude out uh, and cause an uneven base for my bowl. So I'm going to just go ahead and hot glue all of the pieces, the small little three quarter inch pieces, on the exterior of the toilet paper rolls. And then once I get to the center part of the outside ring, I am going to be adding larger pieces in that section. So I wanna do three sticks that are about two to two and a half inches in length. And these are gonna create little holders for my bowl. So I'll just add those three branches there and then continue on with the smaller branches. And you can see there where once they're all on, they're gonna create a holder for the bowl. So I'm going to go ahead then, and once I get to that center part, just add the two to two and a half inch branches at that place, and then continue with the smaller ones until I have four of those larger branches that create a little holder. And here you can see it in the natural look, but I'm gonna go ahead and paint it with gold paint. And here it is, finished with the gold paint. For this next project, I'm going to use a pizza box lid as well as several toilet paper and paper towel rolls. And all I'm going to do with the pizza box lid is fold all of the flaps backwards and then tape all of the edges all the way around. Once the pizza lid flaps are folded and taped, I'm going to paint everything with this white chalk paint. I will be using this paper towel roll to create a tree trunk. So my first thing that I want to do is just cut the roll open and lay it out flat. And then I'm taking a ruler and I'm measuring across three inches. And then I'm going to cut the roll there. Then I'm going to take a ruler again and measure up eight inches and cut the paper at that point. Now I'm going to create some roots for my tree by just cutting these jagged uh, triangles at the bottom. And there's no rhyme or reason, just kind of cutting along in these triangles. And then I'm gonna cut off the two edges, uh, the two last roots. And then I'm gonna go up and start uh, cutting the branches. And these have more of a squared off edge at the top, as you see, whereas the roots have a pointier edge. Then I'm gonna take one of the scrap pieces and just cut two longer jagged triangles to create two of the roots and then kind of glue them back on, but at an angle. Then I'll take the whole trunk with the roots and the branches and add some glue to the back and put that on my pizza box, which is going to act as my canvas for this art piece. I'm then going to go back to the remaining piece of paper towel roll and cut thin strips to create my branches. For the leaves, I'm going to cut thin strips of my toilet paper rolls, and then I'm going to uh, cut those in half. 
and then add a little hot glue to the bottom to seal them back up to create that leaf shape and then just add those right to my branches and then fill out the entire tree all the way around. To add some color, I'll use this brown multi-surface paint and I'm going to use both a makeup brush and a paintbrush, um, both of which I am removing most of the paint from, so I just want to have fairly dry brushes. And uh, first I'll use the makeup sponge to go all the way around the edges of the pizza box to create a distressed finish on the edges um, and then go back with my paintbrush and start painting my branches just kind of dabbing it the way I'm doing there just lightly dabbing and creating a stippled effect on the branches To paint the leaves, I'll dab the paint and paintbrush inside the leaf just the way as I had done with the branches and then just go over the tops of the leaves with the side of my brush to outline those as well. And then here is the finished project. And this piece was actually inspired by something I saw at Kirkland's, and here is a peek at the original. For my next project, I'll be using this wall clock that I picked up from Walmart for about $5. And lucky for me, I hadn't taken it out of the box yet because this box itself is great, and I'll be actually using that a little while later. For this one, I'll be using half inch rings, and so I just took a ruler and marked it off at uh, the roll off at the half inch mark and then I just cut a bunch of half inch rings. Now since I want the rings to have a circular shape, I'm gonna use a coffee pod to just really press it down and, and try to regain that circle shape, or you can use a shot glass, anything that has that kind of shape that you can get a circle out of. Then I'm gonna take some paper straws I had on hand. I did originally get these at Dollar Tree, and I will be cutting these in half. Then I'm gonna take one of my rings and using some hot glue, attach it to the side of my clock. Next, I'm going to take one of my halved straws and glue that to the bottom as well as to the side of the ring. And then I'm going to take another ring and I'm going to attach it to the other side of the straw as well as to the clock. And then I'll just repeat that pattern all the way around. Before painting, I'm going to add some masking tape to the front of the clock so that I don't get any paint on the glass. But before I paint, I did want to add one more element to the design, and that is to add a cross piece around the straw and each of the rings. So I'm going to just cut one of the strips in half, and then I'm going to uh, just wrap it around that section there where the two uh, rings and the straw meat and then glue it in the back and then just snip it off and I'll do that again all the way around. And here it is all painted in gold. For the next one, I'm again going to use half inch cuts of the paper roll. Then I'm again going to use a shot glass to make sure that they have a nice round shape. And 
Next, I'm going to glue one layer of the rings all the way around the mirror. Once my first layer of rings was complete, I went back with some more of the strips, but this time I'm going to keep them in this kind of flattened leaf shape, and I'm going to just glue them in between the rings, so the tops of the rings. So where the two rings meet, I'm going to just add one of these leaf shaped rings, and then once uh, they're all applied, I'm going to spray it with some black spray paint, or you can brush paint if you choose. And here is the finished project. For the next project, I'm going to use the roll from some wrapping paper. And so this is a longer roll. It's also a thinner roll. It has a smaller diameter. And I'm going to also be using these cedar grilling planks. Uh, again, I happen to have these on hand, but I did purchase these at Walmart. So the great thing about these Walmart products is that if you are buying your groceries at Walmart, you can also pick these up as well. And um, I like that the two together was nice and thick, so I went ahead and did glue the two planks together and then just weighted them down with some weights to make sure I had a nice strong bond. Now, I could do these rings. Now, these rings were cut um, at the half inch again, and um, I could glue these as I have in the past, but I wanted to add a little more dimension, so I went ahead and used some of these very teeny tiny zip ties. Now, if you're familiar with doing Dollar Tree crafts and you use zip ties a lot, these are the ones that are those teeny teeny tiny ones that you often probably look at and say, when am I ever going to use these? Well, here's a perfect opportunity uh, for those teeny tiny zip ties to just use these to um, put your small links together. And I will be creating four chain links. Um, Two of them will be 12 links long, and two of them will be four links long, and they're gonna create a border for the tray. And I will be spraying these with this black hammered spray paint. And I also cut some one inch pieces. These are gonna serve as legs, and I also did spray paint those with the black paint, black hammered paint. You can see how it gives a nice metal finish, that black paint, so it's a really good application for this project. And then I'm going to just use big, bring out the big guns and use some E6000 to attach the feet. And then since I already have that E6000 out, I'll go ahead and use that to attach my links to the tray. And then when it's finished, this is what it looks like. This watch your hand sign is a perfect project for quarantine. So again, I'll be using the half inch cuts of paper roll. And I'm also going to use two pieces of cardstock that have, uh, well, one piece that's been cut to seven and a half inches and one that is also at seven and a half inches, but it is um, a sign that says, wash your hands. Now you can make this to do any sign that you choose. I just thought wash your hands was quite appropriate for the moment. So um, I'm going to just take my one seven and a half piece squared um, piece of cardstock and I've just coated it with some glue. Now you can just paint it on like I did there or just glue each of the individual pieces. Adhesive glue would also work well in this application. But as long as you get them on, and this is just kind of creating a little like depth and definition for this sign. And um, then I'm going to just add some of the glue to the top. Now I did have to redo this and when I redid it, I used the adhesive glue and it actually did work much better than that. So I'd uh, advise that if you have that on hand. And I will provide a link to this printout as well. So um, if you want to use this particular sign and this particular font, I will supply that link in the description box below. Next, I'm going to create some embellishments for my sign by taking another paper roll and um, just kind of opening it up, cutting it open. And then I'm going to just cut thin strips of the cardboard, just kind of like that, so that I can um, glue them and swirl them around and create little embellishments for the sign. So um, all I'm going to do is take some regular white glue and then I'm going to just dip it in the glue, kind of spread it around and then just begin to roll it. You kind of can't see it too well here, but I'm kind of just rolling it around kind of like a cinnamon bun kind of shape. 
and you can see them there on the side what they look like and here you can see what the finished product looks like and then also use a little more glue to secure that end and it's kind of what they look like in the end now i'm also going to create some beads for this project to do to make a bead rope with and so i'm going to cut i'm going to switch over to the metric system now because it was just easier to do in metrics it's kind of like spanglish it's like metlish instead but i'm going to just um, do two inch i'm sorry two centimeter strips uh, and then glue them up like i did with the other pieces and in this case i'm going to take a skewer and just wrap it around the skewer to create my bead it takes a little going you know a little hard to get going because they're not as easy to do as the paper beads because it is um you know like a, a thicker material so the cardboard is thicker so it's a little harder to do but it, it does get going eventually and um, end up with you know nice little beads like this and i'm going to do the two centimeter and then i'm going to go back and cut one centimeter strips so that i can create a in you know a piece that will go on top so I got the one centimeter strip, glued it up, went back to my two centimeter bead, and then just wrapped that around the middle of my two center be centimeter bead to create something that has a little bit you know, more definition, a little bit more design to it. And that's what it'll look like when the glue is dry. To finish off the edges of my sign, I'm going to take some of this um, twine that I have on hand. Again, I think I did get that at the Dollar Tree um, originally. But then I'm going to just glue it there to the bottom and then continue to wrap the twine around the sign maybe six or seven times in order to get a nice coverage around those toilet paper rolls. And I'm just winding it around and then I'm going to um, glue it down in places so that it stays you know, nice and in place. And then when I get to the top, I'm going to make sure I get some glue on in that spot and then make sure that I have enough twine to create the handle as well as extra to be able to continue the twine down and wrap it around the bottom. Now I'm just taking some tape in order to create a nice um, kind of edge there to do the beading with. I'll just wrap that tape around and then just kind of snip it off and then that creates something that makes it easy for me to thread the beads through. And then once I'm finished beading, I'll just pull that twine down along the side, make sure it gets glued in along the side, and then, and then continue down around to the bottom, where again, I will glue it in place and make sure it's nice and secure. And now I'll just go back with some glue and attach my embellishments. And there you go, a cute little sign to hang where needed. For the next project, I'll be using two paper towel rolls as well as that remaining piece of the wrapping paper roll. Also a piece of this wood scrapbook paper and this galvanized finished style scrapbook paper. First, I'm gonna take some masking tape and I'm gonna tape off the ends of the paper towel roll. So I'm gonna just do two pieces going in one direction and those will go down around the sides of the paper towel roll. And then I'm going to take two more pieces and I'm going to put those the other way over the top. I just want to have a nice thick coating on that end. And then with the top ones, I'm going to just cut those off instead of wrapping them around the edges, just because I don't want to have too much bulk underneath of the scrapbook paper. Then I'm just going to paint the ends with black paint. Once the paint is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and add some Mod Podge to the side of the paper towel roll. And then I'm going to take my wood scrapbook paper that I have cut in half, and I'm going to just apply one of those halves all the way around the roll, just kind of pressing it down and rolling it around. And then when I get to the seamed edge, I'm going to add a little bit more of the Mod Podge in order to hold that down. And then when this is dry, I will go back and add a second coat on top. And I will do this for both paper towel rolls. Next, I'm gonna take my wrapping paper roll and I'm going to mark off one inch pieces and just cut there. 
And then I'm going to again use some Mod Podge and small strips of that galvanized finished scrapbook paper to um, wrap those small pieces with that. And again, do it the same way. And then once the bottom coat is dry, I will be painting a top coat on all of them. Next, I'm gonna take one of my rolls and I'm going to mark in one inch from each side. Then I'm going to mark also the midpoint. And that's gonna be where I'll be attaching my little galvanized strips. So to attach those, what I'll be doing is just adding some hot glue to the bottom and then lining up that outer edge with the line that I just made. And then I'll do the same for the mid piece where I'll just add some hot glue to the bottom. And then I'm gonna kind of just center that right over that midpoint mark I, that I just made. And then I'll just take the last one, also add some hot glue, and then again, line that outer edge up with the mark that was made on that one inch line. Then I'm going to take that roll and I'm going to just use an awl, which is like kind of a pointy uh, screwdriver and or you can use whatever pointy object you have in order to just create that hole there at the top and I do want to bring that hole all the way down to the bottom because I will be putting some artificial flowers in there and I would like it to go straight through down into that second hole and then I'm going to just use some hot glue to attach my second paper roll to the bottom of my uh, galvanized pieces and then below that middle piece, I want to add a fourth little galvanized strip. So it kind of creates um, an illusion that the middle piece comes down a little further in the middle. For the hanger, I'll be using again some of this twine and I will just attach it with some hot glue to the top, leaving a little end piece there. Uh, and then I'll just wrap it around and pull it out to the top where I will tie it off on the top with that piece that was kind of remaining. Uh, leave enough twine for a hanger and then just take it over to the other side of the roll and again just repeat the process wrapping it around the other edge. Lastly, I'm just going to add some hydrangeas right there to the middle to finish the piece. Next, I'm going to be using paper rolls to create a wreath form. In order to do that, I'm going to cut one inch strips of my paper rolls, and then I'm going to take two of my rings and glue them together side to side. And then I'm gonna take a third ring and add that to the center of the two and then a fourth ring and add that to the center of the two on the other side. And then I'm gonna repeat this process seven times. So I'm gonna have seven of these little four ring units. So I need a total of 28 one inch rings, which works out to be about eight toilet rolls. Then I'm just going to arrange my four piece units to create a wreath form. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hot glue those together. To add some stability, I'm going to glue the wreath form to some craft paper. And so to do that, I'm just going to put some glue in kind of a wreath shape on my craft paper. And you're gonna need quite a bit, so I put a, quite a bit of the glue onto the craft paper. And then I'm just going to paint it around to create um, a wreath shape. And then I'll place the toilet roll wreath right on top. And then I'm gonna just add some extra glue where I didn't, where I missed with the, with the paintbrush and then uh, make sure I have all the pieces that will be connected and then just go ahead and go back with the paintbrush to make sure that I'm getting that glue underneath of the rings. And so the two, uh, the, the rings and the craft paper have uh, glue on them and then the two will attach. And then I'm gonna just weight it down with some books and allow that to dry. 
once dry, I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. First cutting out around the outside and then uh, going on the inside as well and cutting away the paper. Once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and paint the outside of my ring with some white paint. And then once that's done, I'm going to just add some of these Dollar Tree flowers. Um, I'm going to just remove the uh, buds from the stems and then just go ahead and glue, put some hot glue on the sides of the flowers and then just stick them in the form. And that's all there is to it. And now there are some great videos of folks that make flowers out of toilet paper rolls. And I will go ahead and link those in the description box in case you want to do a totally toilet roll wreath. But um, this one is if you had some extra flowers laying around and you can see how pretty that all comes together. Easy peasy. Now here's where I'm going to be using that wall clock box that I saved from earlier. As soon as I saw this, I thought, oh my goodness, this would make just the cutest little wall hanging. So um, I went ahead and saved it. And now I'm going along the back of the box and just cutting out the back. I'm going to use my ruler to create a straight edge there at the bottom. And then I'm going to just pop that back right off. Then I'm going to go back with some masking tape and just secure those back edges around the back of the box. Now, if you are interested in making this DIY and you don't have this box, the next DIY I'm making does have a similar sized box that will work perfect for this DIY as well. So just keep watching for that one and you can have the um, frame uh, using that frame for this project. And then I've just had some, actually these are just kind of leftover pieces that I had from the previous DIYs and uh, so make great use of those extra pieces and then I just added those and then I'm going to just paint the whole thing white and then once uh, that paint was dry I went back with some black craft paint and then I'm going to just distress the edges kind of do like an enamel chipped paint look on these and I'm just going up around the edges of the toilet roll and doing I'll do all five of those and then I'll go back with the box and go along the edges and around the bottom and along the sides to create the distressed look on that as well. And I'm just using a makeup brush here with a very small amount of the black paint. And then once I'm finished with the distressing, I'm going to add some of this lavender that I got for 97 cents from Walmart. And I'm gonna just add those to the toilet roll tubes. And then I also thought it would be fun to, I guess this was just a piece of some foil pan and I just cut off a small little rectangle and uh, printed out the word lavender from my computer and then just glued that to the little piece of the foil pan cut out. And then I'm also going to add some twine here around the uh, tube section of the wall hanging in order to create a little decoration and a little bow on that and then I'll just add my lavender sign to the bottom of the box. For my last DIY I'll be using a shipping box as well as three paper towel rolls. Now technically you could use TP rolls but Problem is, you might just want to be able to say, no, they're paper towel, in case anybody ever asks. So first I took my shipping box and I cut it into two and a half by eight and a half inch rectangles. And then I'm going to just take four of those rectangles and tape them together using some masking tape. Now this is where uh, I'm going to just make, basically make a square box here. And this is where you can use something similar if you want it to do the previous DIY and didn't have um, that clock box. But you can use this same method and just uh, tape a piece across as well and you'll be able to have um, a similar box to the one that was used in the previous DIY. Now um, for this one I'm going to take three more of my eight and a half by two inch pieces of cardboard and I'm going to glue three pieces together. Now this is going to make my shelves that are going to go in between. And I'm going to end up making four shelves all together. Um, only three shown there, but I do actually use a fourth one. And then I'm gonna just take some of that masking tape and go back to my box and tape off all of the front so that I have a nice clean edge on the front of my box. 
and I'm just taking the tape, folding it over, and just creating that nice clean edge on the front. And then I'm going to go back with some more tape and do the same thing for the fronts of my shelves. Then I took my ruler and marked each side at 2, 4, and 6 inches for my shelf placement. Here I'm just wrapping a piece of twine around and taping it down so that I can hold all four sides tightly together as the glue on the shelves dries. And now we're going to go back to Metlish and use the centimeter side of the ruler because it was just easier to measure out that way. And I'm going to mark at 3, 8, 14, and 19 centimeters. And I'm going to do that on all of my shelves, and that is going to be where I'm placing my rolls. But first, I'm just going to go and mark each of those shelves at the 3, 8, 14, and 19 centimeter point. And again, you know, it's metlish. You know, sometimes it's like Spanglish. Sometimes it's just better, better expressed in metric versus English. And looky here, now I'm back to the English standard measurement system and I've cut 16 tubes at one and a half inches deep each. And then I will just glue the tops and the bottom of the tube and just place it right there in my shelf in between. And I will repeat that for all 16 tubes. And here's where I decided to add that fourth cross piece. It, the, the top needed some more stability and um, also it worked out measurement wise anyway and I did add another piece to the top there and glued that in uh, before adding my top shelf of tubes and then I went and painted the whole thing with black spray paint or you could also use some black brush paint and here's what it looked like after it was painted and before I filled it with the pods and here it is filled with the pods now you could use this either sitting on a countertop or hang it on the wall well, I hope you have enjoyed these paper roll room decor DIYs. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give a thumbs up and please share with any family and friends you think will also enjoy this video. If you have a favorite or plan to make any of these, please let me know in the comments below. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like what you see, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you join the family. We do have several other stay at home and craft with me videos which use recycled or household materials or even materials you can find in nature or at your grocery store. And I will provide a link to those in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching and please stay well, stay safe, and if you can and you need to, please stay home. See you next time.